Well, one of the deadlines I think that is is kind of unique here, and it was pointed out by Brady Henderson, and we knew about this, but just sort of relating it to the head coach is is the future Geno Smith. And I hadn't really considered it because I felt like, well, yeah, he's your guy, and you know maybe you draft a guy, and you groom him underneath under Geno for a year or two, and but uh, Brady on with bump and. St- talking about the first big roster move that has to be made. That first decision is going to be on Gino, just because the way his contract is structured at his base salary for next season, $12.7 million, that's the base salary, which would become fully guaranteed if he's still on the roster on February 16th. That's you know five days after the Super Bowl, and that was a month from yesterday. And so those kind of trigger dates basically act as deadlines for teams to make a decision on a guy because they're not going to keep him on the roster past February 16th, have his $12.7 million base salary, which is about half of what he's scheduled to make next season. They're not going to have that be totally guaranteed and then move on from him. So they've got that deadline where that becomes fully guaranteed. And we've talked about what he's being paid in in, in relation to other starting quarterbacks in this league. He's a, he's a bargain as far as I see it, you know, based on, you know, what he produces versus what he's being paid. One more from Brady and then I want to get your thought on this. But he he's pointing out, you know, this deadline, they're in the search for a coach. You assume the implications you want the head coach, whoever that is, to have some say and who the quarterback's going to be. And he points out the guy who pushed hardest for Geno is not in charge anymore. I think the fact that Carroll is no longer there, that makes me a little less confident that he's going to be their quarterback next season. I don't mm-hmm. think it's – I wouldn't say it's likely that they move on from him by any means, but I'm, it seems a little less secure knowing that maybe his biggest advocate in the building is no longer there. So, yeah, and this is interesting because I don't really get a feel one way or the other from Schneider as to whether that's his guy, um, Geno Smith. And mm-hmm. then the other thing is, isn't that just what Pete does with every quarterback? I mean, what do you mean, champion them? Yeah. Oh yeah, every player. Right. So you <laughs> know, not just quarterback. And you know, look, I, I think Brady's probably right, and it's a very, it's a very good point. But we don't really know for sure that. Pete was the biggest champion for for Geno Smith because that's that's what Pete's going to do, man. He's going to, whoever the quarterback is, um, that he's going to pump him up. But it did make me remember, you know, think back to last year when we were down there when he he signed Drew Locke. Mm -hmm. Didn't he seem particularly excited? Seemed incredibly excited for a backup quarterback. (laughs) I was like, (laughs) wow. It was like he won the lottery. I'm like, all right. I mean, maybe, cool. you know, he's like that with every player, too. I mean, obviously, if you sign him to a contract, you're like, yeah, we really like this guy. That's a fair point. I've never been around John when he signed anybody else. That's my only experience being around John <laughs> when he signed somebody. So maybe he does that. That's his mode. But Well, we've seen him on, like, conference calls and things like that where, yeah, right. he's he's probably, you know, pretty close to what Pete is. He's very positive about it. and I mean, he's not going to sign somebody to a big contract and go, yeah, geez, we had to give up a lot for that. Yeah, that's more than we pay that yeah. guy. But, well, do you think – I'm curious where this decision lies. Do you think he's looking at it like, well, you know, the, it's going to be up to whoever we bring in. It's going to be up to you – know, just throw out a name for the sake of this. Dan Quinn. Say Dan Quinn's the new guy. That's that's Dan's call. Or is it, well, I think Gino is our guy for now, so – I'm going to make that John Schneider going to make that decision or I'm going to talk to him about it. How do you, how do you think that decision gets made? If it, I mean, cause we talked about the idea as much as we can look at Gino and go, man, I think he's, he's played well. I don't think he's the greatest quarterback in the league, but he's not your problem by any stretch, but that doesn't mean whoever they hire as the head coach looks at him the same way. He might come in and go, he doesn't fit what I want to do offensively. I want somebody who does this yeah he doesn't do this well i think he has to be part of the conversation when you're hiring the coach you know if that's if that's the case that he is a a champion for for geno smith then you know (laughs) that's got to be laid out right in the beginning right Mm -hmm. okay so here's the one caveat you know we've got geno smith signed here we that's that's the way we want to go and you know and i don't think anybody's going to go oh i'm out i mean these guys want to get a, a head coaching job but yeah, I think I think that's got to be a huge part of the conversation, and and I'm not even sure if if that is what what uh, John thinks about Gino. I was just looking at his his numbers, and you know we we felt really good about the way Gino's season ended because of the game winning drives that he had. He had five of them at the end of the year, um, and but you look at his numbers. I mean, he went from seventy percent basically, sixty nine point eight to sixty four, sixty five. 
Um, only 20 touchdowns versus 30 and nine picks, which is less than the 11 interceptions. But, you know, and there was 10 fewer touchdowns. There's a lot less. Yeah. 10 fewer touchdowns and a lot less attempts, 73 less attempts. So, but, but I think you and I talked about this before. Holding him to the standard that was the first half of last season didn't seem fair to me. He was playing out of his mind. He was complete. I mean, you know, the number he tailed off toward the second half of last year, uh, the previous season. But it made sense. You you knew that he was going to regress to the mean a bit. That You know, he was playing at a level that I don't think was sustainable. Yeah, wasn't he like 75, 80 percent? It was. Completion yeah, it was. I mean, point. he was on fire. It was great to see. But, yeah. you know, not in my opinion, not a fair standard to hold him to. So. I don't know. I don't. I don't look at his numbers with disappointment and go, "Ugh, this guy stinks." He's holding. He's not what's holding him back. Could you be better at that spot? Certainly, but you have. You know the priority checklist we've talked about. There's a lot ahead of him. There's a lot ahead of the quarterback. I get that his contract creates somewhat of a deadline there. I guess my my question for John or the new head coach or even even listeners who are convinced he's not the guy get him out of here he's terrible whatever your feeling is all right well let's play that out you you elect to uh you don't pick up that contract you you take the the cap hit uh before this date of uh february 16th and you 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 commit to moving on who's your guy you don't have another quarterback on the roster drew Locke is a free agent so do you then try to lock him in and say he's our guy or you try to lock him in and, and find another veteran out there to get him to compete with, or is it we're going to draft somebody at 15, 16, wherever they end up in the draft, or we're going we're to trade? I mean, there's not an obvious answer there, I guess is my point. There's not a young guy sitting on the bench where you're like, okay, finally this guy's going to get a chance, or you know, we got a top five pick and we're going to go after one of these guys. You're, you're in kind of a no-man's land right now if you were to move on from him. I don't. To me, there's not an obvious answer.